Good afternoon. Today we're going to present the management of acute coronary syndromes during the MERS-CoV outbreak in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and we will try to extract some lessons for the current uh, COVID-19 pandemic. The speakers will be Dr. Khaled Shaibi, the director of the Cardiac Center at King Fahad Armed Forces Hospital, where he will uh, cover the MERS-CoV outbreak in the Kingdom and the protocols that were adopted. Dr. Waqar Ahmed, he is the director of the primary PCI program and the cardiac care unit. He will go over the different protocols uh, in China, the Saudi Arabian Cardiac Interventional Society, and the American College of Cardiology and uh, Society of Cardiovascular Angiology and Intervention Statement. Finally, I'm going to present the current King Fahad Armed Forces Hospital's um, experience and protocol that we have adopted for the COVID-19 outbreak. The goals of any healthcare system or government during a local epidemic is to limit the spread of the disease among the population and more importantly maybe limit the spread of the disease to healthcare providers for delivering care to the sick while at the same time maintaining appropriate guideline directed therapy to patients with unrelated uh, conditions such as uh, acute coronary syndromes. This can be achieved by strict adherence to infection control protocols, uh, adequate provision of personal protective equipment, maintaining a rapid bed turnover rate to accommodate new cases and protect established patients with non unrelated medical conditions from acquiring uh, the infection while in the hospital, and trying to reserve intensive care beds for those who require ventilation or other circulatory support devices. The Middle East Respiratory Syndrome coronavirus infection was first reported by Saudi Arabia to the World Health Organization in 2012. A major outbreak occurred in the country in 2014. The MERS-CoV uh, outbreak was primarily a lower respiratory tract infection, which had a very high case fatality rate of around 35%. It was less effective than the current COVID-19 uh, epidemic that we're currently experiencing with a reproductive number of between 0.3 to 0.8 and a mean incubation period of six days. As of January 2020, worldwide, primarily in the Gulf region, 2,519 cases have been reported with 860 things, 866 deaths. During the... Uh, MERS-CoV outbreak of 2014, steps were taken by local Ministry of Health and government to uh, limit the spread of the disease, as well as steps we took in our own hospital to define how we were going to deal with patients presenting with acute coronary syndrome. As far as the government steps were concerned, this was a strategy of isolating all MERS-CoV positive patients to a single hospital where uh, the appropriate levels of care were, uh, were available, uh, isolation protocols were in place, adequate supplies of personal protective equipment and other ancillary support uh, equipment was made available in abundancy, while preserving other hospitals as non uh, MERS-CoV centers where they could continue to uh, provide uh, care to non-related medical conditions. We were one of those hospitals. Uh, the steps we took within the hospital itself during this outbreak was to primarily, first of all, limit or actually, actually cancel all elective admissions. As far as our acute coronary syndrome protocol was concerned, the first step was a visual risk assessment for anybody who presented to the emergency room with an acute coronary syndrome, uh, primarily to screen them for, uh, uh, for the possibility of a respiratory tract infection. Uh, and based on this initial risk score, we were able to uh, define two populations, one in which there was a very low likelihood that they were suffering an acute respiratory tract infection as a precipitating factor for the ACS, and these patients were managed according to standard ACS guidelines. The other group of patients that were identified as potentially uh, having a respiratory tract infection that may have precipitated the ACS were then screened for, were, were then divided into three categories. Patients who had a STEMI, patients who had high risk non-STEMI, and those with low risk non-STEMI or unstable angina. 
as far as STEMI patients were concerned and high-risk non-STEMI patients were concerned, we treated them as per guidelines but with strict uh, utilization of appropriate personal protection equipment for the operator and cath lab personnel during the procedure as well as protocols to ensure the uh, safety of all in the cath lab and conversion of the cath lab to a negative isolation uh, uh, operating area. For those patients with low risk or unstable angina in which there was a suspicion of possible res uh, co coexistent respiratory infections, a, uh, these patients were tested uh, for MERS-CoV. If they were positive for MERS-CoV, they were treated conservatively only and were not taken to the cath lab, while those who had a negative MERS-CoV screen were then treated as per standard of care. Uh, utilizing uh, these, pros, uh, these uh, pr protocols at the King Fahd Armed Forces Hospital during the 2014 MERS outbreak uh, actually had great results. Uh, the, uh, the outcomes uh, during this three-month uh, period were a mortality of 2% for all comers, uh, an incidence of heart failure complicating their ACS of only 3%, uh, and uh, we maintained our uh, monthly bed turnover rate uh, uh, that uh, was unchanged from that both before and after the outbreak. And uh, most importantly, there was zero transmission of infection to involved healthcare workers within the cardiac center. So after the one week period where they're all asymptomatic, 30% will remain asymptomatic and be infected for another two weeks. Another half will develop mild symptoms after the first week. It's only a minority, the 15% that develop severe symptoms. So we have a period of the first week and about 80% of the patients will be infected with the virus without having symptoms or very mild symptoms. Now symptoms, when they present, they present as an upper respiratory tract infection in the first phase with constitutional symptoms. And after that, the minority are the ones that develop a massive host response and that leads to the ARDS, the cardiogenic shock, and sepsis. Because of the highly infectious nature of this disease, there is a danger for healthcare workers. And we'd, I'm gonna go over two protocols. One is from Wuhan, China, and the second one is from the Saudi Arabian Cardiovascular Informational Society. Both these protocols are very similar and use fibrinolytic therapy after a long time as the mainstay for management for STEMI patients and medical therapy for non-STEMI patients. The main differences between the Wuhan protocol and the Saudi Arabian Cardiovascular Interventional Society protocol is the Wuhan protocol uses testing, fast testing for the COVID and CT angiography. And then they divide the patients as positive or negative. And every patient will get fibrinolytic therapy, and after fibrinolytic therapy, patients are reassessed, and a risk-benefit ratio is assessed, and patients are taken to the cath lab only if the benefit outweighs the risk, and they emphasize protection for the healthcare workers, and dedicated cath labs, if not even dedicated hospitals. The Saudi Arabian Cardiovascular Interventional Society on the other hand, divides patients into high-risk STEMI and low-risk STEMI. The low-risk STEMI are treated with fibrinolytic therapy. These are small inferior MIs or lateral MIs. High-risk STEMI, the anterior MI, or patients who are unstable, are then divided whether they are positive for COVID or high-risk for COVID. These are treated with fibrinolytic therapy. Only the very low-risk COVID patients, and they use a visual assessment, uh, which may not be very accurate, but these patients can be treated with primary PCI but every other patient is treated with fibrinolytic therapy, after which reassess for reperfusion. If there is reperfusion, continue medical therapy, and if there is no reperfusion, then reassess for risks and benefit and cath lab for those that can be taken to cath lab safely. Regarding non-ST elevation MI, both protocols are very similar. In low-risk patients, medical therapy, and readmit the patients once this epidemic is over. In unstable and high-risk patient, then we have to reassess uh, whether they can wait or they need to go to the cath lab immediately. For patients who are COVID positive and pneumonia, absolutely medical therapy.
The ACC and Sky have come up with a statement that emphasized protection and negative pressure cath labs for these patients. Protection for the staff is extremely necessary for all patients because you never know when the patients may code, may vomit, and that would lead to infection of the staff. At this point, I'm going to go over the protocols that we have adopted at King Fahad Armed Forces Hospital for the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. For ST elevation myocardial infarctions, the patients undergo a visual um, scoring system for COVID-19. If the scoring is zero, these patients uh, per protocol receive primary PCI and are directed to the cath lab immediately. If these patients have a score of six or more, or they have confirmed COVID-19, uh, these patients get thrombolytic therapy. Now, in accordance with the European guidelines for ST elevation MIs, we have a window of 120 minutes. If any patient from door to balloon time is expected to exceed 120 minutes, then the guidelines recommend thrombolytic therapy. At our sites, the COVID-19 test takes about three to five hours. Um, patients who are then negative are admitted to the cardiac care unit and salvage PCI is considered in those patients. Patients who are positive go to the medical ICU for isolation and continue with conservative therapy. As for the non-ST elevation myocardial infarction protocol, the real difference uh, happens in those who are intermediate group. Those who are zero risk, visual risk score for COVID-19 undergo uh, the usual protocol that is recommended by the guidelines. Those who have a score of six or more, or they are positive for COVID-19, usually uh, have a conservative approach unless they are unstable, in which case they are taken to the cath lab with precaution. But the patients who have an intermediate score or are stable, these patients can undergo a cardiac CT. The CT has been helpful in uh, providing an additional layer of stratification based on anatomy. And I'm going to go over a case with you today that actually emphasizes how we were able to discriminate which patients were we were able to manage conservatively and which required further catheterization. This was a 57-year-old gentleman with multiple cardiovascular risk factors, namely hypertension and dyslipidemia, and he was an ex-smoker. Several years ago, he underwent a PCI of the left circumflex coronary artery following an acute coronary syndrome. He presents to the emergency room with a non-ST elevation MI. His, uh, his COVID risk score uh, was about four. So what we elected to do at this point is not rush him to the catheterization laboratory and perform a cardiac CT. The cardiac CT was allowed us to have lung windows that showed that his lungs were actually clear. And the coronary uh, evaluation showed a distal left main stenosis with osteal LAB and the prior stent had been occluded in the circumflex coronary artery. We discussed at the multidisciplinary team meeting that this is a 57-year-old patient who was previously uh, healthy and had preserved left ventricular systolic function. Given the current pandemic of the COVID-19, the discussion with the cardiac surgeons was to try to avoid uh, major uh, bypass surgery at this time and uh, shorten hospital stay and ICU admissions. We therefore discussed this with the patient and we proceeded with performing a coronary angiogram uh, with the premise of proceeding with PCI immediately. So the angiogram was actually performed and confirmed. The right coronary angiogram that you see uh, shows a patent right coronary angiogram with moderate disease and collaterals uh, to the left circumflex coronary artery, which is occluded just before the stent. The LAO cranial views uh, sorry, the areocranial view uh, demonstrates the distal left main stenosis, as well as the osteal LED stenosis, and the other view, uh, the caudal view, uh, demonstrates the same degree of stenosis and the occluded circumflex coronary artery. We proceeded to revascularize this patient. Um, both the circumflex uh, chronic total occlusion was opened and stented. The uh, stent, there was another stent that was placed uh, from the LED back into the left main. The struts into the circumflex was opened and the results were um, very satisfactory. The patient's uh, recovery and uh, hospital duration was no more than three days and we were able to turn over the bed and send the patient home safely. This case is clearly not the protocol that we normally adopt uh, before uh, the COVID-19 outbreak. However, utilizing cardiac CT has proven useful in our center 
where we can evaluate the lung fields and determine if there's any involvement and the extent of the involvement, but also in using anatomic stratification for patients, those who can be safely discharged with mild disease and those who have critical disease that needs to be addressed during the same admission. Furthermore, it allows for a discussion with our uh, colleagues, the cardiac surgeons, to, and the patient prior to any revascularization strategies made. The aim, of course, is to be able to maintain our bed turnover, transfer, uh, discharge patients early before they get infected, but at the same time keeping central to the decisions the uh, risk of infecting healthcare workers. From our experience at King Fahad Armed Forces Hospital, our recommendation at this point is that for all pandemics, it would be wise to assign centers to isolate and treat patients with infective diseases and to assign other centers that can treat, according to guidelines, any of the non-communicable diseases. Adherence to guidelines, as long as the system is not overwhelmed with the use of PPEs, uh, is very important and vital to the control of these uh, cases. Um, but in addition to that, we all have to recognize that although the flow of acute coronary syndromes does uh, decrease during pandemics and uh, major outbreaks, such as MERS-CoV and what uh, is currently observed with the COVID-19 pandemic, um, we may have a surge of these patients who come back with complications or heart failures once uh, the infective disease or pandemic is under control. And therefore, it is important to have centers that are sterile and are able to still provide services for these conditions.